Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today, that word is kneeling, kneeling. Now, uh, I know we're drawing to uh, an end, uh, nearly to a close. We've got one more uh, of our daily videos left for November where we have been going through saying what we're thankful for. And today I'm thankful for God's kneeling. Now, more specifically, this would be Jesus's kneeling, uh, God's son. Uh, but, you know, we could talk about a lot of different things. But part of this is the the prayer of Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. Now, we've talked about in, in previous videos and even back to our, our videos on the Holy Spirit of how the Spirit intercedes for us uh, from Romans chapter 8. But uh, today, specifically, I want us to look at a prayer of Jesus. Now, um, you know, normally we just do a verse or two or a passage, you know, maybe a short, a couple of verses. Uh, but today, today I, I want you to hang with me. We're going to read the entire chapter of John 17. And you'll notice through here, and, and maybe even in your Bible, as is in mine, it, it's separated into like three parts of Jesus's prayer. And he prays first. Uh, he's kind of praying for himself. It's a personal prayer. Um, to what's coming. We know this is right before he is going to the Garden of Gethsemane to be uh, to spend some more time in prayer and to be um, arrested uh, by the guards there that come with Judas. He's getting ready to be betrayed. And um, so this is right before that. And that leads up to, we know, as the, the Passion Week, the crucifixion, uh, we know everything that's going through um, in that series. But here's the thing. He's praying for what's getting ready to happen. He's praying for himself and his relationship with the Father. But then he prays for the disciples. And then he turns and prays for all believers. Uh, and so that would include us as well. And, and notice how here, how he's praying so sincerely that this is the same prayer that he's praying for us today. And so it's something that I want us to look at today. So John chapter 17 Starting in verse 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Then he kind of transitions into talking about the disciples. In verse 6, he says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of this world, not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but you should keep them from the evil one. 
They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth. Then he transitions into talking about all believers. In verse 20, he says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and the, the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have known that you sent me. And I have declared to them your name and will declare it. That the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Now, what a beautiful prayer. What a, a beautiful uh, just uh, kind of insight into the heart of Christ. The fact that he, even as he speaks that he's no longer of this world, that he, he never really was of this world. Even though he was, right, he was still fully God and fully man, but he was still not of this world. But even as he's speaking as though everything is already completed because with God, everything is final. He already knew what was coming. He knew exactly every step that was going to be made. He knew every amount of suffering and he knew that he was going to have to die. But he also knew that he was going to raise back to life on that third day. So even as he's speaking with all of this, saying, look, almost as if he had already ascended back to heaven. He said, Father, I'm praying for these. Right. He was praying that he would continue to do the will of God. But he was speaking uh, as if it had already been accomplished. But then he is speaking and praying for the disciples and all that they were going to be uh, facing in the coming days. And he wasn't praying that God would remove them from the circumstances, but know that God would give them the strength to endure the circumstances. And furthermore, that's the prayer that he has for all believers. See, as he prays for all that will hear and believe because of the word of the disciples, ultimately you trace it back far enough. That's exactly where you and I came to faith and knowledge in Christ was because the disciples spread the word of God. Because they were the first to give testimony and to testify about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So ultimately, it comes back to their witness. So with all of that, right, with this, this beautiful prayer that we see, Today, in this season of Thanksgiving, right, and this, even this Thanksgiving weekend that we are now enjoying, today I am thankful that God the Son, Jesus Christ, saw the need for prayer. And if we see constantly through his ministry that he was praying, and, and a lot of those, we don't know what he was praying about, and we don't know the conversations between him and the Father. But here, what great insight to know that when at, in his last moments, in his last days on earth, his last hours, what was he doing? He was praying for you. And he was praying for me. And I don't know, oh, maybe you need to hear that word of encouragement today to know that in Christ's final hours uh, before he was crucified, that he was praying for you. So if God himself, God in flesh, in the form of man, in Jesus Christ, if he saw the need to pray, then oh, how much more should we be praying? So today I simply ask you, are you thankful for God's kneeling. 
And even on the back end of that, how much time are you spending on bended knee today? God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.